everybody, and welcome back to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. I am Eric up on the bar for today. Octomore, 10 years old, fourth edition. As always, here on the channel, no taste finish review this whiskey coming your way. I'll tell you a bit about the value, give you my final thoughts, final score, I'll leave you with a malt musing. Uh, but first, if you haven't, take a second, smash that subscribe button. It'll make sure you don't miss my reviews. They drop every Friday here on YouTube. You'll also uh, be in the know for my Tuesday happy hours, which happen every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So, Octomore. Um, there's a bit to tell you about this. So, first and foremost, Octomore comes out of the Brooklotti Distillery, and it is part of their heavily, uh, heavily peated? No, it's not heavily peated. It's super heavily peated. Um, the Port Charlotte line from Brooklotti is what they would call their heavily peated. This is super heavily peated. And the reason they say this is because the parts per million uh, amount of peat measured in this is, I think, the highest out of any whiskey that exists. Um, on the Octomore line, they come out with usually three or four releases each year. You'll see the Octomore, you know, for example, this year, 12.1, uh, which is usually the um, Scottish barley, usually around five years old. You'll see an Octomore uh, 12.3, which is an Isla Barley, usually right around that three to five years old as well. And then they would do periodic travel exclusives where they'll do wine finishes, and those are usually the 0.2s. Every once in a while, you'll get a 0.4 as well. And then every couple of years, you got this 10 years old. So this is the fourth edition of the 10 years old. And this one was released, I believe, 2019. It was distilled in 2009. Uh, this is bottled at 54.3% ABV. And it is unchill filtered and natural color. It says so right here on the tube and says so right here as well on the bottle. Um, this is actually not cast strength because they are said to have put usually a drop or two of spring water into the mix. So they technically can't say it's cast strength. Um, a little bit more about the PPM on this. So something to note, this one in particular is 208 parts per million. Now, a like regular Lafroy 10, Ardbeg 10, you're looking at things around that 40 to 45 range, give or take. Um, so this is significantly more peated now, but the PPM itself is actually, uh, this is the parts per million of peat before distillation. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that there is plenty of controversy as to uh, how much the human palate can actually taste peat. Um, I think a lot of folks say that you really can't taste it beyond around 35, 40 ppms. So uh, other factors in the whiskey may account for the flavor that you're getting. So you may not be actually tasting 208 or whatever it is after distillation. So a lot of information. Here's the bottle. Uh, this one in particular, solid black, comes in this kind of shampoo uh, shampoo bottle design. Um, and again, it says here, super heavily peated Isla single malt whiskey. This is from Progressive Heberdeen Distillers, Brooklotti, 10 years old, unchill filtered and coloring free. So those are the stats here on the Octomore. It is a peat monster. Um, I does not say what this has been matured in. We'll take a look now when we open it up. So that is the color. My guess here, ex bourbon, um, could potentially have some sherry in it, but I'm guessing this is an ex bourbon. Okay, let's get into it. On the nose, Ooh. raw elemental lemon earthiness. You can definitely smell the peat. Now there's a difference between peat and peaty and smoky. So far, this one is more on the peaty side. It's not that campfire smell. It's much more of this kind of earthy effervescent kind of minerality that you get from the peat. Quite sweet. You're getting some kind of confectionery sugar, some maybe even hints of light brown sugar. Amazingly accessible on the palate, given the fact that this is uh, so heavily peated. Oh no, quite nice. It has a good amount of depth, sweetness, and spice, and hints of oak. All right, let's give it a taste. Slunch. Arrives with a medium viscosity. 
big hit in the tongue. This just attacks your palate. Very intense. Um, it's earthy. It's sweet. It's likely salty. Um, you're getting the kind of bourbon cast. I think this is straight up bourbon cast. Caramel, slight toffee notes, the vanilla, even hints of uh, maybe baking chocolate, dark chocolate. Wow. But that peat hit is huge, it's intense, and it comes real quick on the development. It is uh, like biting into a chili pepper. Hits you really hard, but it's pretty delicious. It goes into a nice medium, medium long finish. Getting some of that earthiness, a little bit of ashiness, smoke. Interesting stuff. Do one more sip here, neat, before we add some water. Mm. And the second sip, again, really nice body on this. You know, as I mentioned, the Octomore lines have usually been a way to showcase and, and experiment with young casks or with young spirit in cast in good casks because, you know, you'll find them from three years old to five years old. Uh, usually closer to three, honestly. Um, this is, I think, the oldest Octomore you can really get your hands on um, pretty readily. Mm. That smoke really comes in on the back end. You don't get as much on the nose, but on the back, you really get that heavy smoke. Okay, let's put some water on this. Again, it is 54.3% ABV. I'm going to put about four drops on here just to bring this down a little bit. See what else happens. I see coat this glass here. Mm. Much, much earthier, much spicier. The sweetness seems to have taken a bit of a step back. And kind of a uh, now you're getting more of that campfire, that damp, like a damp wood uh, from a campfire. Maybe even hints of kind of like asphalt, things like that, road tar. Hi, Kathy. Mm. Not much has changed other than that the sweetness dialed back just a tad here. Hmm. Really nice. Caramel, bit of orange, kind of like an orange marmalade kind of thing going on here. Spice, a little bit of mint. I think this has actually helped out a bit with the water here. Also here on the finish, I gotta say, I'm getting a slight tropical fruit note. It's a little bit of a hint of pineapple or maybe something like uh, papaya mango or something. But really nice and it's coming in pretty strong here on the end of the finish which is a welcome and interesting surprise on this whiskey so octomore 10 years old fourth edition um these are relatively limited. I believe they do maybe 12,000 bottles. Um, not the easiest thing to get your hands on, but it's not an exclusive whiskey. Uh, if you come across this, you're gonna be looking at around anywhere from 225 to $250. So these Octomores come with a significant price tag compared to some of the other eyeless single malt whiskeys uh, that you'll see at your local liquor store. Um, Clearly, it is a high quality dram, but boy, does that price tag uh, make you think twice. I'm going to give this a just maybe a medium low value uh, just because of things that you can compare it to. It is a unique whiskey in that it's this super heavily peated. It sure brings the thunder, but um, the price on that is just tough. So let's talk final thoughts here. Um, first of all, we'll see what Winston the Whiskey Cat has to say about the Octomore. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Doesn't like the peat. Okay. Um, 
This is a delicious whiskey. It's, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, what Brooke Lottie has been doing with the Octomores for many years now, super exciting stuff. It's really a testament to cast quality. Again, a lot of the Octomore stuff you'll find is not older than three years old. Um, this 10, these are a little bit less sprightly than the and, and, and fierce as those younger ones are. It definitely has a bit more age, a bit round, more rounded, a bit more relaxed despite the high PPMs uh, of peat on this. Quite delicious stuff. Definitely a whiskey that uh, I, I want to keep in my collection. I, I really do enjoy this line. Um, but boy, does that price tag uh, throw you off. I mean, when you're looking at spending over $200 on a heavily peated whiskey, I mean, there are other things out there that you can get for that. Much higher aged Laphroaigs, Arbegs, things like that. Um, La, La, Lagavulin. So, you know, this is this is something for the for the serious serious peat heads, I think, um, and not a whiskey I would recommend for folks just kind of getting into peated whiskey. There's a lot of other ones to try before you need to break the bank on an Octomar. But once you do, you will be rewarded. I also highly encourage folks to check out the uh, the Isla Barley releases, especially these are usually the point three uh, releases. Those are really fantastic. And in fact, I, I do like that a little bit more than this one that I miss that kind of uh, sweetness and that Brook Lottie uh, cereal note that I pick up a lot more on that. But this 10 year old is no slouch at all. Um, really good stuff. And even with this with this heavy price tag, you know, I think this is one of the better releases that I've had of theirs. Uh, I'm gonna give this a four out of five. Um, I think this is a damn good whiskey. I would recommend folks to grab it again with the caveat that if you are a, uh, just getting into, uh, I love peated whiskey. Check out a Lagavulin. Check out an Ardbeg. Check out the Port Charlotte line from uh, Brook Lottie. So 4.5 or 4 out of 5 for the uh, Octomore 10 years old uh, 4th edition. And with that, I will hand you, send you on over to your Malt Musing, and we will catch you next week here on Malt Music Whiskey Reviews. Salam, Joe.